going to be going through this with the music off because I am kind of worried that this game might have uh, copyright problems. I played about a half hour and this is such like an amateur game dev project that I'm kind of worried that they stole the music. So I'm not going to be playing with music. Maybe we can insert some music into the edit. But yeah, this is Dark Blood. I've played about 30 minutes or so of the game already. It's rough. <laughs> I understand why this game has 9% positive reviews on Steam, and I'm honestly kind of excited to show it because uh, <laughs> it's one of the most interesting games I've played. Valentina, a small village in Anastasia land. The artwork in this game is pretty nice, and here we're being introduced to the protagonist, which is Athanas. Looks like he has back problems, by the way, and he's wielding something that looks suspiciously like the nail from Hollow Knight. And whenever he runs in cutscenes, it does do that jank stuttering effect, which is very weird. And here we're being introduced to Kale, who looks like he needs to pee very badly and we just accept the mission to save some girl in the forest, and we're off. Then the game introduces us to Gehenna, the dark land of death. The enemies in this scene just fly around totally randomly and just attack. The hunger and death here are constantly increasing. <laughs> and for some reason, they're like, it seems like they're programmed to attack this NPC, although the NPC like doesn't take damage, they're just casually chatting. So Adrian is opening a portal for the Land of Gehenna inhabitants to... Oh! Adrian just got f***ing bounced away. <laughs> the protagonist's wife Harley is concerned because he hasn't come back and then she gets warped away. And here I stutter step back onto the screen and a portal opens up and someone says come in. So uh, obviously I do. That's the introduction to Dark Blood. Quite the intro, no? So one of my favorite things about this game is it's one of those games where it has analog stick running. The speed of your run is based off of how far you're tilting the analog stick. You can run and it looks like you're going full speed, even though you're going at a snail's speed. The other thing is that if you run with keyboard, it actually controls differently than with analog stick. So if you're on controller and you tilt the analog stick in a direction, you instantly accelerate to like max speed. If you're on keyboard and you hit a direction, you slowly accelerate to max speed. So it feels super slidey on keyboard, but on analog stick, it feels normal, kind of like in Hollow Knight. We do have a double jump in this game. It doesn't let you go very high, but you can kind of cross a bit more distance. And my favorite thing in the game, summon the Black Panther. <laughs> pretty anticlimactic but yeah you can summon the black panther and this is what happens pretty awesome right <laughs> the black panther often gets stuck but sometimes eventually he'll find his way free and just go on a rampage however casting any spell does cost one hp which is fine because everything in the game is practically guaranteed to deal damage to you avoiding damage in this game is very difficult as you can see if you just attack an enemy as it runs into you, you also take damage because the enemy hitbox just keeps going after it dies. It doesn't disappear right away. We have an energy ball and an orb of lightning, which is just a reskinned energy ball. <laughs> oh my. So yeah, if, if you touch the lava, you just instantly die and it warps you back to the start of the room, no matter how big the room is. Double jump helps us to jump higher and farther. <laughs> Wow, really? So here the game is telling us there are platforms that fall, but sometimes they don't fall. And there's no way to tell, which is awesome. Especially because if they fall while you're on them, you just die. Here we're at my favorite room of the game, and there are also green panthers. There's also no iframes in this game, so if you touch an enemy multiple times in a row, you just die. You have to use these platforms to dodge the enemy fireballs, which have no sound effect and come from off screen. Be careful with the hellhounds. They can't see you, but can smell you and will hunt you to the end. <laughs> what was I saying about the hitboxes continuing after the enemies died? And here we get to the fun part of the tutorial. So first off, if you walk into this guy, he very quietly talks. Let me boost the volume. I'm out of mana. I'm out of mana. Don't you dare tell me that. <laughs> 
just random voice lines. Prepare to die, heathen. Oh my god. I thought we were friends. And also, he's here because he's giving you the option to skip the tutorial, and you're soon about to see why. Because that, this tutorial is just here to teach you about platforms that fly from out of vision and insta-kill you. So you have to trigger the platform and then run backwards, or sometimes you can squeeze past them. So it's basically, I want to be the guy, but with incredibly jank controls, which is kind of like the Red Goblin game I also played for this video. Once again, we're offered the choice to skip the tutorial, which is very bizarre. Although it makes sense because like these platforms can hit you multiple times because there's no iframes. Oh my god. And by the way, if you think it can't get any worse than this, oh, it gets way worse than this. This is the good part of the game. I will fight. I will fight. <laughs> what do you mean? And there's a platform that comes from the ceiling right here. <laughs> so you have to watch out for that. Normally in games, when you land on a moving platform, you move with the platform. In other words, you gain the platform speed. It just gets applied to your character. It's not hard to program, okay? I've literally done it in my own little game dev project, which was something I did on the weekend without knowing how to ever make a game. But in this game, when you land on a platform, you just stay still and you'll fall and die. Isn't that amazing? And here, we're gonna get taught how to swim, just like the fish. <laughs> Look at these fish. <laughs> ah, what a game. It looks like you can swim, but then you jump in the water and you just have like the running animation. <laughs> See, the thing that's weird, the backgrounds in the water actually look really nice. Like some of the artwork in this game looks very nice. Also, I'm bouncing off the floor. I, like I'm not hitting A to jump. The backgrounds here actually look really nice. But then you look at the blocks. Look at these blocks and compare these blocks to this background. Did the dev even make this artwork? Or is it just like some open source type stuff? So we can just buy all of the items here. We got a necklace of agility plus one. <laughs> we got a long sword. 20% chance to do two times normal damage. Awesome. And we got a ring of regeneration. Awesome. All right, we're done with the tutorial. Uh, okay. Oh, and look, we're just in this random place. <laughs> oh, and there's fireballs coming at us from off screen. I love that. That's my favorite thing. Well, it's a good thing sometimes the fire... Oh my god. The background effect, the way that it moves is just like so nauseating. It's the worst thing. I can't imagine someone doing artwork that's this nice and then just crapping out this game. Like that doesn't make any sense. This artwork has to be like open source or something. Oh, we got to the boss. Oh, this is such a good boss. <laughs> you just got the fireballs coming from off screen. You can't really melee attack this boss because it flies around randomly. Like, how am I supposed to hit this guy? Oh. Let you live for now. <laughs> Let you live for now. Amazing. Oh, Athenas, you finally found me. I have been waiting for you for a long time. Not that long. <laughs> Let's go home together. <laughs> what was that? Finally, we got home. I know that we just got home, but I have some things to do right now. But we just got home. And you left me alone? <laughs> there was a girl lost in the forest. I had to go look for her right now. This house is awful, by the way. It's just a chair, a dining table, and a bookshelf. Prepare to die, even. <laughs> Why? Oh, and we're in the forest. What a transition. So, oh, uh, okay, uh, <laughs> help, okay, this segment is very repetitive, you're just holding right and hidden enemies, really the best way to deal with these enemies is to just jump over them, that kind of goes for like any enemy in this game, so you don't really get anything from killing them, oh we made it, go panther, Oh, 
Okay, let me show you how bad these hounds are. First of all, the hounds fly. See? They just fly. <laughs> the hounds just can fly through the air. And they will bounce off of your head and just repeatedly hit you until you die. Or if they're underneath you, you bounce off of them and they repeatedly hit you until you die. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Stop. Stop. <laughs> this game is hilarious. It has to be the worst game that I've played, I think. Oh my god. Jesus. I'm gonna try and run past this if I can. Oh, thank god. They came here to find me. What? That's not... What? <laughs> she just got launched into the sky. I will revenge for you. Yes, I will revenge for you. Oh, oh, we're getting an epic fight scene. What? Impossible. <laughs> I will save you, my friend. What? Why? Why is he slashing at me? That's the guy who brought the demons here. Thank you for saving my life. What? If you feel strong enough, press the interactive button to start practicing. I love this game's combat. He doesn't even have an attack animation, he just puts his arms out. I don't know how much more of this I can handle. This might be the worst game I've ever played. Maybe some of the farming sim games were worse. Also, this is not a Metroidvania. Why is this in the Metroidvania section on Steam? <laughs> Alright, I think I think I've had I think I've had enough. Why is the quit button? Oh, the the tree overlaps with the menu. Okay, I'm gonna start with the good. The artwork is nice, although I strongly suspect it's an asset flip, because who would ever take the time to make such nice art and place it within such an awful game? Dark Blood is barely functional, and selling it for $15 Canadian is egregious. The game includes so many cutscenes and so much dialogue, but it's all nonsense to the point that it's comical. The developer advertises an evasion system in the game on the store page, and you'd think I think that means some kind of dodge roll, but really it's just gaining a percent chance to avoid attacks through collectible power-ups. This is not a good solution to all of the game's undodgeable damage which there's tons of. The complete lack of invincibility frames means that most times when you take one hit, you're actually taking several hits instead, potentially all of the hits resulting in death. If you hit and kill an enemy with your melee attack, its contact damage hitbox doesn't immediately disappear and will continue running into you and deal sometimes multiple hits of damage after you've killed the enemy. This makes melee attacks feel awful and inconsistent, like you're just trading damage with the enemies. And spells aren't much better either, because while they can consistently deal damage to the enemies, they also consume health to cast. This means there's no reliable way to avoid losing health in the game. You just have to take the damage and try to find healing items afterward, and there's not really much to explore to find them, because most levels in the game are just straight, featureless, flat lines. At the beginning, though, you gain access to a Ring of Regeneration, which provides healing on a timer, meaning you're rewarded for sitting and waiting after fighting each enemy, like you're playing classic EverQuest in the year 19. But after all that waiting, the enemies can just one-shot you by contact damage if you touch them. Do I really need to continue? The developer should be ashamed that they tried to sell this game. Dark Blood would have at least been ironically enjoyable if the gameplay wasn't so frustrating. As someone who enjoys playing games most would call frustrating, Dark Blood was on another level. This game sucks. And I really wish games like this wouldn't show up in the search when I look for Metroidvanias, either. What is this on the screen right now? It's telling me to pick controller or keyboard? Oh my god, why is it so pixelated and awful and blurry? <laughs> Oh boy, the regret is already starting to sink in. Meant for mature players slash mature audiences only. 
That's for you guys. Let's uh, start a new game. Let's do this. Do I want to erase my memory? Okay, sure. Okay, we're in the skies. Oh. Uh, hey, it's a duck. <laughs> the stock duck sound effect. <laughs> Amazing. So how, how do I get up here? Uh, oh, goodbye, duck. <laughs> what? Uh, did I just die? <laughs> what the f is happening? <laughs> this is like a scripted death, I guess? Am I like respawning? Yeah, it seems like the only controls... It's just... I can move and hit X. Derangement. <laughs> yeah. I am feeling deranged. Woe is purgatory. Oh! I found hell! Perfect! Okay, there's a little headless guy and barrels of oil. Is that an enemy? Can I talk to them? Uh, I can't seem to interact with them in any way. What is this? Did I die? What's this monitor? Uh, what the heck is this? It looks like I have a piece of paper. So if I hit right, it says pull of intuition for the lost. Is this like a progression guide in the game? How many of these are there? Obtain fetal position ability. <laughs> of course. Let's see what this is. Oh, I'm back back here with the ducks. I just get stuck in any wall. Oh, so I just need to like let go. If I'm holding left and I hit jump, it doesn't do anything. So I have to like let go and then jump. It's kind of like, this is like speedrunner tech just to play the game normally. What is down here? Oh my god. That eyeball is looking at me. And I don't like it. What is all this? Are all these like computer monitors or TVs? I know they mentioned a sentient TV enemy. Like defeat the sentient TV. Oh boy. Did I die? I, I guess I died. Because I spawned at a gravestone. But th this is also where I started that exploration section. No one understands. It's a very useful signpost. With the left and right arrow telling me I can go left or right. Very helpful. Thank you, game. This is a nightmare. For once, I agree. Time shadow intervals. Oh, so it's telling me to time my movement with the shadow teleport. Recording. What the fuck is this? Don't let your mind cannibalize itself. What is all this, though? It's like yellow stuff on the ground. Can't. I don't have a shovel or anything to dig it up. Oh! Ah, I died again. <laughs> Foolish me. I was just trying to see what I could interact with. Okay, let's go back in the Metroidvania land. In 2D platformer land. Oh, there's another chair. Can I go into a different dimension again? Let's sit down. Oh, is the house moving? Did the ducks just... Oh my god. Jesus. Did the ducks just turn into f***ing aliens? Can, can I... Can I just go up? Oh no! No! Just touching those kills you and brings you all the way back here. Holy shit, this game is punishing. Is this game tested? You can just you can just jump infinitely. Like it's kinda tricky to do, but it's also not that hard to do. <laughs> you know? This is all the same. Uh this is just gonna kill me, isn't it?
Oh, what? What the f is happening? Do I have to dodge this shit? What is going on? <laughs> I want to go back to the place with the ducks. Oh my god. Okay, I don't think it's going to catch up to me. I'm solidly outrunning it. Just by holding right. <laughs> kind of curious what happens if it catches up to me. Still coming? No, oh, it died. Oh, there's another mask. That's just like mine. This, this is just like me. What? But why is the door locked? It just came through the door. What do you mean? Wait, what happens if I go to the right? Oh, it's different again? Wait, why am I behind the house? Okay, I guess I'll enter here again. The, the layering of, like, the background is... A little bit glitchy because I'm behind the house. Yo, what the f This is different. Another one of these. Do I just need to keep going right? <laughs> I can't even tell if I'm moving. What gameplay right now? This is some insane gameplay. Oh shit. Oh, oh, f oh my god. Oh my god, go inside. Jesus. Wait, why Why can I still hear it chasing me? What the f*** are these things? Why am I getting teleported when I crouch? Crouching causes me to... Oh, it's uncrouching that's causing me to teleport. It just spawned on top of me. <laughs> what the f***? What is this? <laughs> Thank you. My thoughts exactly. <laughs> okay, I don't have any keys. Oh, there's all these skeletons in here. Can I talk to them? Oh, this says ARG. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's a lot of spots here that need keys. Interesting. Need a key. It's like a, a switch down here. It's locked. Yep. <clears throat> Seems like everything is locked, which is awesome. <laughs> so this this doorway is locked as well, right? I can't open this. Yep. Everything's locked. Is this like a dungeon? It's locked. Of course, it's locked. Is everywhere, like, is everything just supposed to be locked? Why is everything locked? Why can't I go anywhere? I can just see all these cool places and be like, wow, I wish I could go in there. But it's fucking locked. Everything's locked. Let's see what's across the bridge. There's got to be something in this area for me to get. It's got to be something, right? It's just another locked gate. Okay, let's go back. Yeah, I have to just go back up to the water and start wading through because <laughs> there's nothing for me to get here other than maybe I got a checkpoint I'm not even sure if I did or not I go up oh there's like a thing on the screen that pops up is that telling me where to go oh what the fuck is this I just died? That's it? I'm just gonna die if I go in here, right? Oh! What? Oh, the controls are different. I can't roll or jump? Uh... Oh, oh, oh! Oh. Why is there a 2D section with different controls than the other 2D section? So I couldn't jump, I couldn't roll, and I also had health that time. I don't have health in the other section, I instantly die to any hit. This is like a Metroidvania where you don't unlock any abilities. You just get to see all the cool places you could go to and all the doorways and stuff, and it's just like, it's locked. 
You can't enter anywhere. Sorry. Let me try going back to that spot with the fire here. Why can't I jump? Is it a glitch that I can't jump in that section? Because it looks like there's a spot that I could go to to the right. Let me double check. Yeah, there's like a door to the right, but I can't get to it because I can't jump. Oh, yeah, you, what? What let me roll? Why? What? I was just rolling. I get the rolling state when I exit the menu. That That's not intended. That's so weird. Why do I have to enter and exit the menu to roll? It's supposed to be, you just hit down and you roll. That's how you roll in the other section. Why is it different? And I'm clearly supposed to go to the right. There's a doorway. Okay, let me, let me do this. I just died? Why is there a doorway? If it just kills you. Oh my god. I didn't realize that was a pit. There's a potion. Maybe that's the thing I can use. I have to drink it and I can jump over things? Oh, is this new? How did I even get here? What's that I smell? A door that opens? Oh my god. I've been playing for two over two hours, like two hours and ten minutes, just finding locked doors. And finally a door opens. Is that a key? Oh I got a key. Oh shit, there's enemies. And there's a little laser thing. Just wait for the enemy to fall, I guess. <laughs> uh, they just kind of like skate around very fast. Oh, what? Uh, huh? No, good thing I can just like despawn them by using this exploit. It's continually. Oh, holy shit. That enemy almost bounced into me. What is it with the physics of these enemies? Why are they the way that they are? Why? No, I'm gonna... <laughs> Was this play tested? They had to have played this and... So someone thought this was a good idea to release this game for money? What is this? I got... a thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that is. I got something though. Oh, here's the exit. Okay, the the item that I got is there. It's in the bot at the very bottom. Oh, and I got a thing here. What the heck is that? When did I get that? What are these aliens doing? Was this a doorway? What? Why am I here? Why did it bring me there? Okay. If I can make it through this zone, I think I win. Like, I, I think that counts as a victory. Because I'm like 20%, no, I'm less than 20%, because it was like 60 different steps in the little guide thing. And I'm on like step five, so I'm like 10% of my way through the game. Am I supposed to just play this for like 40 hours? There's no way I could do that. I can't do that. I'm not superhuman. I'm just a regular ass person. Let's lower these as far down as I can. Then we'll go up. No. <laughs> I don't know. That didn't open up the bottom gate. So what about what about what am I supposed to do? Do I really need to keep going? Maybe we have to just call it quits. Look at all of this stuff. This game is huge. Now, of course, 50% of it, probably like more like 90% of it is just like slowly walking through areas you've been through a hundred times. You'd probably beat this game in like an hour if you knew where to go. 
So, this game had no reviews on Steam, but I thought it was a fair inclusion given the name of the developer, Trash Vomit Studios. Happy Mask is called a Metroidvania by the developer, and while it technically meets the strict criteria, it really isn't anything like Metroid or Castlevania. I'm not really sure what I would say the game is even like. It's an exploration-focused game where you have to figure things out on your own, but while the game seems like a bizarre trip where you don't know what to expect next that's not really reflected in the gameplay. I played for about five hours and what it mostly boiled down to was running around the map finding keys, trying to find the doors for those keys, and then entering new areas to find keys for other doors. The gameplay is just running around in a vast open maze-like world without any guidance whatsoever on where to go next. And in a way I kind of like that, but the game is really lacking when it comes to any kind of unique encounters, meaning there's really not that much to keep the experience fresh and interesting. There are 2D platforming segments, which are neat, but as a platformer, the game barely functions. There's practically no checkpoints in the 2D segments, and you die in one hit, meaning you can lose up to 10 minutes of time for just touching an enemy, or due to a glitch, or because of a guaranteed death event, because those are a thing. And keep in mind, throughout all the time you'll spend backtracking to where you died, you'll have no idea if you're even going in the right direction to get the next unlock. And enemies in the 2D segments just jolt around randomly and completely unpredictably. The only way to consistently pass these enemies is by using the infinite jump glitch, which I found almost immediately. There are also 2D segments where your character has health and the controls are just inexplicably different. Happy Mask was 20 US dollars when I purchased it, and that's a huge ask for this game. And that's exactly why no one's buying it. In my opinion, this game would require a lot more polish, bug fixing, and just interesting content in general to ask that price. Frankly, I think asking anything more than five US dollars for this is kind of ridiculous. But I will say that Happy Mask is a unique experience, even though it feels kind of like a suffering simulator. Oh, okay. Oh, this is so s slidey. You just keep sliding. Why is it like I'm on ice? Welcome to the forest of dreams. Watch your step. Melchior? What? Why is there a signpost from someone named Melchior at that specific spot? Oh, shit. Super Ruby Dragon attack. Uh, you're not a nightmare, are you? You shouldn't be sneaking behind people's backs. It's dangerous, you know. What? White Knight, you said. Oh, he's your master? I understand how you feel. Master Melchior left weeks ago and hasn't returned. If you go deep into the forest and find the ice caverns, Master Melchior is in there. Can I just take this? It's locked. Oh, unfortunate. It's kind of cool how open... Oh. <laughs> the sad music. <laughs> Red Goblin can't break metal boxes. If only you knew someone really strong. Wait. Igor referring to himself, perhaps? Oh. oh, it's just the same dialogue that I've already been through. Oh. Uh, what? Just gave me some superpower somehow. So when I die, I lose all of the diamonds that I picked up, but I need them for abilities too. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Amazing. What would have happened if I made it across the platforms above me to the right? Would I just be in a totally different area of the game? What? <laughs> Why is there a saw that I could fall directly into? I can't see that from the other screen, man. The diamond... Oh. <laughs> I can't understate how slippery the controls are. Like, why... What? Was that visible? Why are the respawns not instant? What does this game have to load? I have a pretty strong PC. I think this game could load a little bit faster. Oh, what? I, I forgot. <laughs> the spikes are not visible. It's literally an invisible death trap. Oh, you can't avoid it. If you get close to the white orb, you instantly die. That's amazing. Maybe I should go to the save point. That's like right after this. What? What set it off? I'm soft locked. Like, I don't know if I can get past this. <laughs> Fuck. 
What? It's not about touching the orb. It's about going far enough to the right. Can I fall onto this? Oh yeah, you can like Goomba stomp them. Okay. I feel like that's not very obvious. <laughs> There's no variable jump height. If you hit jump and you just like tap it, you get a full jump no matter what. Oh my god, I fell to somewhere new. Can I make it back up? Oh, I made it to the save point. I know you are looking for the ice caverns. You just need to keep going east, you know? Come back if you really help master Melchior, okay? Oh. Am I really stuck down here? <laughs> Wait, why are they all shown? That's kind of like a spoiler, isn't it? I am so fucking confused right now. I'm just stuck. The jumps even are so glitchy. I can get like a super jump if I jump up. <laughs> That's not intended. You get like verticality from going up these ramps, but you can also do like a super jump just like that. I guarantee that's not intended. Oh, right. I should have known the exact same thing that looks like a save point spawns spikes, which instantly kill me. Should have known. Let me awake the power Igor shared with you. This will help you during your travels. New ability unlocked. Fireball. So you just like travel one or two screens and you talk to someone and get an ability. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call this a metroidvania yet. <laughs> what does the fireball even do? Oh, that's me dropping the diamonds. Oh my, I fucking forgot. Oh my god. Now I have to get the fucking thing back again. What a video game. Wait, why is there a red... I was just wondering why there was a red line next to the character. Oh, there's a spot over here. Nice. Oh, we got new music, new area. <laughs> I should have known there would be a gap there. My bad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that time I actually should have known. Oh, what? Be careful, this thing is angry. I couldn't move because of the dialogue box. I was trying to read. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you can... What? Huh? Wait, how am I... What am I supposed to do? Jesus. Wait, you can't die by these? Oh, you can't. Those slimes cannot even kill you? Wait, so y the solution there is to walk on its head? Oh, I, I don't have a jump when I'm on its head. How the fuck do I play this game? Oh my god. <laughs> I love the epic music, too. Does it actually have HP, but it's just like not visibly taking any damage? Oh my. It's so slippery. Jesus Christ. Christ. I don't even know what to do. I, I use like five fireballs. Do I just need to sit there and cast fireball like 20 fucking times? I think the point of this spawner is that I'm supposed to hit them to get diamonds to like shoot fireballs. But I hit them, they go onto the spikes to the right, and I can't pick up their diamonds. So I'm just stuck here with no diamonds while this epic music plays and the character to the right runs in place. Well, there I got... Oh, I got the diamonds. You unlock an ability and try to use it. Nothing happens. Try to get diamonds. Oh my fuck. <laughs> I, I think. <gasps> oh, finally. I'm in a hurry. I need to go back and get some stuff ready to save the realm. You know, nightmares this big and aggressive are not normal. Anyway, no, I don't know. If you ever meet a red guy named Igor, he will have a gift for you. See you later. What? He's on his way to the factory. He told me that your master was probably there. Oh my, I don't fucking care about diamonds. They don't even do anything, really. Sweet Igor told me you needed to get to the factory. When you reach the ice cavern's upper body, there is a portal. I know you can't get that high, so I will share my conviction with you. Ready? 
Why didn't you do that earlier, face? Now you can jump while on air. I can't fucking believe that it uses diamonds. The gall of this developer blocking <laughs> a double jump behind an expendable resource this is gonna fall. Yep. I know your tricks, you shitty game dev. That's kind of mean, isn't it? But to be fair, it's also kind of true. Like, <laughs> it's a lack of respect for people's time, I feel. Yeah, we're in the factory. I bet in a speedrun you could... <sighs> speedrunner brain took over for a second. Oops. <laughs> oh my god. Why? In a game with instant death, hidden death traps everywhere, you have to put more save points for the love of fucking god. For some reason, punching makes those spikes fall. Let's try this. See? <laughs> punching makes them fall. <laughs> Where am I supposed to go? Is this a dead end? Maybe I have to jump off screen. That would be so fucked up. There's no save point anywhere close by. And they want me to do a leap of faith? That is awful. Oh. Prepare to disappear. All this world will disappear. Okay. Honestly, probably for the best. <laughs> I can just stand here. <laughs> Amazing. Is this what you guys wanted out of Red Goblin Cursed Forest? <laughs> just stand in here. All these slimes pile up. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, what a good boss. <laughs> Red, is that you? My dear friend, I think this is what I get for playing a role that is not mine. I barely remember, but I wanted to destroy this world. The world where my nightmares came from. But I... I ended up being a nightmare myself. This is the end. <laughs> Artuo didn't die because of reasons. He turned into a little flying nightmare. Oh. Is there a way to turn him back? I don't fucking care. I gotta go backtrack to the NPCs again. Wait, you can only use the save points once? Am I before the boss? Do I have to do the boss again? I, I do. The guy is not fucking with me. Are you kidding me? Time for another epic boss fight. How do you let this happen? Why is the save point available to me now, but it wasn't before? This world is collapsing soon. Okay. Well, whatever. Melchior is waiting for you in the highest part of the forest. Hello, little one. I see you found her too. Oh, that's good. <laughs> now I can't fix his physical form. Okay. How does everyone always know everything that's going on in other parts of the world? <laughs> but I can get you out of here. This world is collapsing due to the energy of foreign beings. Oh, oops. Sorry about that. It's not your fault. In fact, it is mine. You see, I'm a foreign being. I came here long, long ago when me and my brothers decided someone had to be watching this realm. Research for our magic was what we were doing, so don't worry about this outcome. What? I stayed too long in this world and now I can't leave. So, are you ready to go back? Why are you telling me your story? I don't give a fuck. Igor, Luca, and Pip are familiars summoned by me. It's sad, but they will disappear soon. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I guess they're going to disappear. Cool. There is no time left, little one. I'm sorry, and goodbye. Is that the end of the game? <laughs> oh my god. You can even see the red lines in the sprites in the credits. <laughs> Review time. I beat Red Goblin in an hour and I sort of enjoyed it because it's one of those games that's just so painful, it's kind of funny. A big red flag for me was the lack of controller support or even rebindable keys. Either way, Red Goblin is advertised as being a challenging game inspired by old school retro platformers. A game you have to master in order to finish. In reality, Red Goblin is like I want to be the guy on ice. But the only meaningful obstacles are random insta-kill death traps, which are completely trivial to avoid once you know where they are. Death traps, which might I add, are indicated with the same sprite that the developer used for save points. I was reading a review complaining about these death traps and the developer responded to the review saying, I can guarantee you will never fall again onto the traps you already fell into. But the developer also calls the game challenging. If you can't 
fail once you've seen the obstacles, what's challenging about them? I also saw the developer talking about the slope jumps, which you saw already, claiming that they're intended mechanics. So if you're moving down a slope and you jump, and you gain no height from that jump, that's not a glitch, it's a mechanic. To their credit, the developer is being polite, but this is some high level copium. So let me just rapid fire the main issues I had with the game. First off, the movement does not need to be so slippery. There's no reason for that. I really disliked using diamonds for basic abilities, especially because the abilities are needed to navigate through the map. Losing the diamonds when you're touched by basic enemies who otherwise don't damage you in any way is really weird. The bosses don't have any indication that they're taking damage. The game isn't really a metroidvania, there's no reason to ever leave the beaten path, except to get diamonds, which you lose instantly anyway. At any point, there's only one place on the map where you can progress the game. All of the tedious backtracking and death traps just exist to pad the game's playtime, and it's obvious. And the dev even admits to it in a review, stating, the game can be beaten in under two hours. That's the reason behind the death traps. Once you've mastered where the traps are, the game can be run in under 20 minutes. All of this, along with the slew of open source assets, came together to form the masterpiece that's Red Goblin Cursed Forest. It's fun, if you enjoy awful games like I do. Press left bumper and right bumper to switch characters. Press right trigger to switch to partner characters. The artwork's not my favorite. <laughs> like in the bottom right, look at that. Oh, it's kind of janky. <laughs> Why is my character's face not changing? <laughs> That looks like some sort of magic transport. I can use that to summon the others. I think I'm supposed to touch it. Why? What? <laughs> oh, okay. Press the right analog to directly select. Oh, you can. Oh, what? Oh, that's so weird. What? Why? Why is that character over there? Press Y to use the selected item. Press select to switch the selected item. What? Why don't you just have a modern control setup? <laughs> this is meant to be played on Steam, not a Nintendo controller. Jesus. That's a tanky rat. Oh my god. Oh, I got health. Oh, I got a level up. Oh, I got health probably from the level up. Found health up. <laughs> okay. I really don't like how you pause for a frame when you land on the ground. Or is that the entire game pausing? I can't really tell. When you fall off these platforms, your physics is different than if you see like why do i immediately fall it's like where do the other characters come into this equation i guess i might need their abilities at some point but if i don't have like a summoning thing to get them to me i'm just gonna have to go through the same screens with a different character how is that appealing you know oh here we go so so <laughs> So I just have to bring another character all the way here, going through the same screens that I've already been through? <sighs> I don't understand. Like, it's cool that you have this idea of, like, having different characters, kind of like Trine. But that's that's not how they did that in Trine. Probably because they realized it wouldn't be fun to have to walk through the same screens. I find it a little bit weird that I can only hit one enemy at a time with the sword. Like, you'd kind of expect the sword to hit everything in its range. But if there's two enemies in range of the sword, it only hits one enemy. Found attack up. Oh, sweet. I would like to use the attack up on the other character, but... Because, like, it's really awkward when there's multiple enemies in front of me. Feels like the ranged character is just, like, way better than this character. Because you deal the same damage. And the other characters range. The idea of leveling up in this game kind of encourages you, I feel, to focus on one character. Even though the game is supposed to be about playing with multiple characters. Like, if you can level one character up, it's better than having a bunch of characters at a low level. <laughs> wonder how far down these caves go. Should I turn back or keep going? Uh, I mean... Don't we have, like, a mission from the king to keep going? <laughs> what do you mean? What are you doing? Why are they stabbing randomly? <laughs> this character also has a sword. Looks the same. This one just has a shield. Oh, this character has a spear. Uh, this character seems pretty good. Oh, th 
The bats go through the floor. The... Oh, why is that three damage? That's so much more than the other characters. That's an odd structure. Agroha's shield would fit in it. <laughs> You're telling me that around this game world, there are structures which I need to fit the shield into. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of neat. That's kind of cool. But I can just like sit here and the enemies just die. <laughs> I mean, that seems kind of strong. Maybe it's not the best for bosses, though. So... <laughs> the actual position of the characters doesn't seem to be saved. Because that character reset to the beginning of the screen. Both characters did, actually. But now they're fine? I don't understand. Why are my shoulder buttons not working? The shoulder buttons don't work. <laughs> the controls in this game are, like, very glitched. Amazing. I love this character. <laughs> Why aren't there more characters like this in other games? Yeah, these bats are pretty annoying. Flying enemies flying through the floor is really annoying. Oh, we got a platforming challenge. Yeah. The spikes are changed. These spikes are supposed to be on the wall. They were on the wall before. Only Lara lack. Oh. Oh. This character has a double jump? Oh my god. I don't like that the melee attacks only hit one thing. That's very bizarre. See, this is the... <laughs> this is the problem with the level system in this game. It's hard for me to even progress at all with this character. Because <laughs> I deal one damage to the rats. Just a lot of weird things in this game. And it's just, it's so tedious. You're just progressing along through the game and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you need this character for the room. So you just do the same rooms over again, which is exactly what I thought would be the problem with this game. Kind of artificially padding the playtime and, oh, I need a different projectile for that. So... <laughs> now I can't, I can't change characters again because the game glitched out. There we go. You need this specific character to get this. It just gives you a health up. I, don't, I feel like it's not even worth it. Like, this game's so easy so far. Oh, there are golden rats. Ooh. Can I not operate a lever because I'm a mage? <laughs> okay. Yeah, makes sense. So I'm just gonna put all my eggs in one basket and level up this guy up a ton. And uh, if he dies, then I stop playing. What the heck is this? It almost like hurts my eyes a little bit. This must be the way to the crystal caves. This must be the way to the crystal caves. <laughs> oh yeah, we made it to the crystal caves. Aren't we going to like another kingdom or something? I, I don't remember. That's a sword. What? Jesus. It's gonna fucking insta-kill me. Oh, there's two buffs down there. Saya is a good pupil. Saya so, yeah, is a good pupil. <laughs> he just randomly says that. <laughs> gotta add some character development to the game. Gotta add some backstory. I really like this game's story. And Saya is a good pupil. By the way, did you know Saya is a good pupil? And to be honest, I'm bored out of my fucking mind. Okay, new, new area. Oh, we're in the kingdom, I guess. Well, these characters are just like us, kinda. Except stupid. <laughs> Playing this game has made me feel like that enemy. I'm, that's how it's felt this entire time. This land is disrupted <laughs> by both the Siren and Sira. What? They will fighting each other. I should wait until one side wins before I try to clear the rest out. This part really showcases how broken the game is. <laughs> like, what is that? What is that enemy even doing? <laughs> Fatal error in action number one of create event for object obj spawn spec a. Review time. Now something I didn't see before playing the game is a notice in the store description stating that the game is on an old build that's playable 
but has problems in that a new build is being actively worked on. This game, however, released in 2017 and still hasn't received that update. They might also want to add to that disclaimer that the game is literally unbeatable due to a crash partway through and that the most basic game mechanics barely function. In my opinion, calling the current build playable is a bit of a stretch. If you look past the major game breaking issues, you get a game that honestly just isn't enjoyable. It isn't much of a Metroidvania since you don't really unlock new abilities to navigate the map, but instead start with the abilities on different characters. I like the basic idea of switching between characters with different strengths and collecting power-ups around the map, but the execution just has serious flaws. It's just incredibly tedious to drag characters across the same screens, which aren't even fun the first time through. The idea of stationing characters characters in certain parts of the screen to allow them to automatically attack nearby enemies and defend certain spots is a creative and fun idea, but it's too glitchy to even take the time to do it. You'll just cause enemies to spawn on top of you and kill you in a game with permadeath. And even if it did work, the level design does not support it. It would be really neat if the game had some kind of like wave-based enemy attacks and it's a game about warring kingdoms in the first place. My advice to the dev is to just start off a bit simpler and less ambitious and be careful not to promise updates if they're not going to happen. In the 119th year of the Elworth era, the constraints of ancient plague erosion have already decayed. The ancient plague sows seeds on the land, search for hosts, and guide them individually. Until the end, erosion erupted on the entire land. Is this game machine translated? I'm already very confused. UI is a bit much. Also, when I dodge, my camera kind of just teleports, which is not a good look. There's a strong attack on Y, and you hit X to do like a fast combo attack. Oh, you have like a double jump to start with. There's no sound effect, though. You should have a sound effect for the double jump. Nice to meet you. I'm glad you believe me. <sighs> this is machine translated for sure. Yes. Oh, I think my character said something. I saw her mouth moving. After completing these, you'll definitely be able to understand the problem <laughs> that confuses you every day. Oh man, I would like to be able to understand the game. The game actually looks really pretty, like in this little cinematic. It looks quite nice. I like the lighting effects. Captain Idonia, are you alright? Although you may not really care, please don't keep poking yourself with an awl. Jesus, what the fuck? Have you completely forgotten what happened? Haha, <laughs> you also have moments of humor. What? I am... <laughs> this dialogue makes no fucking sense. This place is Elworth Castle, which is now shrouded in erosion. There are infected monsters everywhere. If we regroup and let everyone set out together, we should still be able to execute the culprit, Duke Meredith. In that place, it is possible to find a way to end this plague. I like how they're just like, you can end the plague there, but they don't explain how. <laughs> the camera movement is a bit janky, I gotta say. Like, just look at this. Why, why does the dodge not work up a ramp? <laughs> just like sway into the side a little bit. <laughs> this ledge climb? Look at that. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> no hat, no mask, nameless scarf. <laughs> Do you normally name your scarves? Okay, so you level up at the rest points. Oh, and there's like fast travel points. You can fast travel at the resting points. After one jump, you can still jump again in the air. The faster the second jump is pressed, the higher the height of the jump. Okay, so the reason why that happens is because they program like just plus acceleration when you do a second jump. So if you double jump quickly, the acceleration stacks up before the gravity can be applied. It's, it's better to like set the acceleration rather than adding generally, I think. I'm not like an expert at this stuff, but that appears to be what's happening here. We've got our first enemy. Okay, so you kind of like dodge through the enemies. That actually feels kind of nice. When pressing right bumper, generate an attack that reduces a large amount of defense points to surrounding enemies. And use the attack to restore HP value. Oh, okay. That's cool. 
During the attack recovery time window, your TP will not decrease. You can confirm the remaining number of times through the HUD in the upper left corner. What? They didn't explain what TP even is. Locks lower pathway. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that I can't move in this direction. Okay, cool. We got a little map. You love to see it. Some games don't have that. Oh, this is where I came from. What? What? Oh. Oh my god. Why am I jumping when I exit the ladder like that? <laughs> check equipment. Oh. Why do is there a check mark? Once I equip it though, how do I actually use it? Oh. That's how. Oh. Oops. This is definitely really linear so far. Maybe the game will open up soon. So far, you can just kind of mash to kill enemies. Why? Thump. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna thump these enemies. Oh, oh shit. Oh my god. What? Oh. Death. <laughs> well, I was just saying the game's easy. Oops. It'd be nice if there were a few more save points. <laughs> This time I spammed. It worked exceedingly well. Some enemies have defensive means, and their defense value scale is located under the enemy's HP value scale. Oh, so to get rid of the HP, the, the white bar, you have to use the thump. I don't mind this, like it's a bit jank for sure, but you do have some... Uh, uh what? Oh, you do get hit very quickly. <laughs> But I mean, they, they have some cool ideas with the combat. Oh shit. Oh, I have to thump. Ouch. Seems like I just want to get behind the enemy at all times. Okay. It's definitely jank, but I wouldn't say it's like awful. It's just jank. It is kind of fun to like switch between the different attacks and it's fun to kind of dodge the enemy attacks. I wish the dodge felt a bit less jank because dodging is like such a key feature of this game's combat that like the camera jank is not great. Either way, this is decent so far. I don't think this deserves to be like horribly reviewed or anything. I'm Fusellier from Bresk. Have you heard of it? No, I have not. Alas, to be ashamed. <laughs> I got lost and now I don't know how to get back where. <laughs> there are fewer and fewer people with clear minds. Don't die casually. <laughs> no matter how many people there are in Meredith Army, they should not be able to defeat the captain. I've already died like five times, dude. <laughs> Defeating the Corroded can earn some blood fragments. Please be sure to collect some and hand them over to me. I can use them to stimulate some brand power for you. Yeah, I gotta, gotta power up my brand. <laughs> I have goods here. Why don't you go out and buy some of those things in exchange? Okay. Can I, can I buy things? What? Same dialogue? Switch NPC action? Why? Why is it on B? Okay, I, I can't get the... I can't get the pop- when I hit B, the pop-up goes away and I have to walk away and come back. That's weird. Oh my god. I hate using the analog stick for this shit. Oh, hitting the enemy uses TP, but hitting the air doesn't? Maybe TP is like stamina? Yeah, looks like it. Contact with erosion debris. What? Contacted with erosion debris. What does that mean? <laughs> What does it mean? <laughs> the road leading to the forest has been blocked by rotten spine. Jesus. Be careful. If you feel something's wrong, quickly withdraw. One successfully blocks all attacks from the front and wins. It indicates that their skills are indeed far superior to their opponents. Oh, I have two techniques. That's the hilt bash. You <laughs> grab the blade of the sword and swing it. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> this is normal swordsmanship stuff. <laughs> it is a very slow attack though, so I feel like I'm just gonna get hit if I use that. What about the other one? <laughs> the, that animation is also a bit jank. 
to like slap myself in the face with the sword. Those who step in the rotten spine rashly will surely die. What? My save point is like so far away. What do you mean rashly? What other do I have to dash? Oh, what? What? <laughs> I think I dashed in while the, the screen was still fading in. The fade in, it's too slow. You can't really see what's happening. I also like can't move while I'm on this lift. So weird. <laughs> Uh, no. Oh my, okay. No. Why? <laughs> Why? I'm being soft locked in this elevator. <laughs> I think I might just have to walk off the elevator because if I dodge, it seems like I'm not getting the ledge grab. But also I wanted to dodge because I have like no speed and I can't jump off the elevator because it'll send the elevator down. No, no, I just... Am I stuck? Am I actually stuck? I, I'm stuck. How do I get off the elevator? Maybe I can jump if I just like, ah, oh, for fuck's sake. I can't jump right here. If I hit A, nothing happens. If I hold left, that's what happens. And if I dodge, I also don't get the ledge climb. So I think I might be soft locked. I, <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> what do I do? Oh my god. Can I save and exit and get out? No, it spawns me in the elevator shaft. Oh my god. I'm hard locked. Like, I can't get out of here. Oh, actually, if I respawn the enemies, if I die to the enemies, it'll send me back to a save point. Oh, I found the way, I think. <laughs> okay, we got out. Thank fucking God. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Jesus. guy moves very quickly. I don't like the charging from off screen. This is like Watcher Knights on steroids. Oh my god, the way it turns around instantly. That is awful. This is so jank. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ow, Jesus. <laughs> that is not the best fight. <laughs> Stop hitting me. Oh, that was quick. Solid attempt. <laughs> Jesus, this is jank. Boss also, like, turns around without an animation. Holy sh... Shit, this is bad. <laughs> it just turned around mid lunch. Okay, that is so fucking jank. Holy shit. All right, I played about an hour of Blood Decay. Uh, never sure if I'm saying that right. And it left me with mixed feelings. The art style is actually nice, and I think the character and enemy designs are fairly decent, although the animations were often a little weird. I like that the combat is so fast-paced and punishing, which means the game offers a fair challenge, and the idea of switching between light and heavy attacks to target different HP bars is fun. And the game just has a cool vibe that I enjoyed. It reminded me a bit of Ender Lilies or Assault and Sanctuary. Overall though, Blood Decay is held back by the jank. The glitches were rough, even resulting in a softlock so bad that I almost had to delete my save file. Luckily I found a way to death warp out of it, otherwise I would have actually had to. The combat feels sloppy and usually rewards button mashing over thoughtful inputs. The poorly translated dialogue, although unintentionally funny, makes it difficult to take the story seriously. The UI is confusing, has too many unnecessary elements, and lacks basic features such 
which is hitting B to close menus. And the second boss was a doozy, but it was also almost good. It simultaneously showcased the game's potential, but also its broken mechanics, such as the totally random enemy armor regeneration, which I just couldn't make any sense of. I also felt like the game's frenetic, fast-paced combat isn't really suited for a stamina system, as it ultimately made the combat feel even more random than it already was. And it's unfortunate because I do feel that this game has potential, but it was just too rushed and unpolished. I don't feel bad about the purchase, the game was appropriately priced. I just think the dev would be capable of much better if they revisited the game and took the time to work on it just a little more.